Hi, it's Tania Williams here. Thank you for coming stamping with me today. This is the card that we're going to be creating and the inside design. Okay, let's get stamping. So what I'm using is Clockworks from Stampin' Up! is one of the first sets that we're going to use. And I'm going to be inking up the image in Crumb Cake Ink. I've positioned the image with the stamp magic and I actually you might notice I haven't removed the stamp magic and I'm actually inking it up and re-stamping it multiple times. That allows me to get a really crisp image by stamping it a few times you'll see the boldness in the image. Now it's a two-step stamp set so this is the second part of the stamp and it's actually the clock face and it's Roman numerals and I'm just stamping down and again doing the same thing where I'm positioning it with the stamp magic and stamping it multiple times. And here's the arms to the clock. And I've just done that twice in the same nature. This stamp, um, the wings are from Affection Collection from our holiday catalogue. And that's being stamped in Bar Jabris. And it's actually being stamped just in the traditional way because I've got a different effect that I'm going to create with that. I'm just sponging the clocks um, with some crumb cake ink. You'll notice that they've already been cut out, which I did to save some time, and I've actually stamped a few more images. This top layer, I only want a light layering of sponging, so I'm just tapping onto my scrap paper in between the ink pad and the clock, so that will just dilute the generation tone. Here I have just stamped out a second set of the arms. I'm just going to cut it into a smaller triangle and attach it to another piece of cardstock. What that will do is it will give me double thickness. I'm going to be attaching it with some snail adhesive. Um, two reasons I do that. A, because it is such a small piece of um, image, when I cut it out it will just make it so much easier once um, it's double thickness. But also when I attach it to the clock face, just make it that little bit higher um, and a little bit clearer that it is has been actually cut out and add to the final effect of the card. I love cutting out so I um, I don't mind cutting out fiddly pieces but I know some people probably would leave that step out. I'm just putting a little bit of snail adhesive just along the back of it just to make sure that it sticks down and I always find a dry glue when you're doing a small piece like this just so you don't get adhesive oozing out the sides because that is never a good look. Here I'm just going to be piercing a hole through the centre of the clock for the um, brad the crumb cake brad and you might notice what i'm piercing it on is the new size of the um, piercing mat from stampin up and they have been increased in size and they are absolutely sensational just putting some stampin dimensionals on the back of my clock face i uh, love dimensionals and i use them on pretty much every project um, i use them a lot i love them and now i'm just going to attach the clock face to one of the layers of the clock You'll notice again, I'm using scissors to position. Um, I have what I call a fat fumbly fingers. So just by using the scissors, it allows me to get it in place um, without getting my fingers in the way. And also the oils from your fingers can affect um, the glue. Okay, what I'm doing is with the wing is I've just attached it to a piece of cardstock and I've just got a brayer and I'm actually um, rolling it in Barjabri's ink and I'm actually rolling it down the wing and what I want is I want it to be darker at the top of the wing and going down into a lighter um, on the outside and that's just a really easy colour effect and it's going to be really beautiful and soft. The reason that you should attach it to cardstock and not just drop it down is because it is a small piece of cardstock it can get stuck to the brayer as you're rolling and just by using the um, adhesive means it's going to keep it in that one place for you. Now this is the second wing and I'm just repeating the process that I did for the first wing just in the second one by rolling the ink down. You'll notice that when I actually start rayering I start off the actual piece of um, paper, the wing, and so that I don't have any harsh lines on the actual wing. Here I'm assembling the clock just by putting the wing between the two layers of the clock with a little bit of snail adhesive. Just positioning so that their balance is straight and also so that the adhesive has actually attached to the other piece of cardstock so they're not going to fall down. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp out the greeting that will go on the main card. I'm actually doing a technique called admitting, so I'm going to be taking out parts of the evening that I don't want. I've inked it up in a cherry cobbler marker and a stamping jig. You can see I've stamped the top line already. I'm now just inking up that bottom line, positioning where I think it should go, just putting down the clock just to make sure that I've left enough room and I'll actually use a ruler to make sure that just by the grid that I'm going straight both vertically and horizontally. And now I'll take away the imaging sheet and I've already inked up the stamp so just giving it a little half and stamping it down. Now this image is from Affection Collection and I'm going to be inking that in Summer Star Fruit which is one of our new ink colours and possibly my favourite colour at the moment. I am very much in love with it. What I just did there was I was just um, reviewing my colour combination that I had selected originally just making sure that the Summer Star Fruit does actually tie in before I start stamping and it looks hor horrible. So I've just stamped that down just once in Affection Collection from the stamps from Affection Collection. Now this one is in Bajar Breeze. It is from Darling Adventure. You might notice that it doesn't have a block. The reason that I do that is because I just like to get little spots of script. I don't want a whole image stamped down. So if I take it off the block I just have a little bit more control. I can just put a little bit of pressure just behind little parts of the stamp and I'll get spots of script. Now the summer star fruit is coming out um, again, the ink, and I'm just stamping some of the images from clockwork, so some of the little clogs, and I'm just positioning them. Um, there's three sizes of the stamps, and I'll just make sure that they look right. I actually made myself laugh when I played this back. It, <laughs> did you see the way that I spin and position and make sure I've got it in the right place, like here? Um, do I stamp it? Do I not stamp it? Do I stamp it? No. Okay, I'm going to stamp it. So, you know, it's a funny to look at the way that you stamp because you don't even realise some of the things that you do. I'm now just putting the clock in place just with the dimensionals. Make sure it's well positioned and then I'll pull my scissors out. Now, I'm just going to be stamping the enjoying, um, which is the strip that will go along the centre of the card. I've just put that on a, a smaller piece of... Um, very vanilla cardstock and just trimming it down. Now I've left this scene in here because this is my boo boo um, and I couldn't have taken it out without you just seeing it because um, you would have seen it on the punch on the table. I was trying to get it to be an even triangle and I just did a fail. I failed twice so I've just pulled out the good old trusty scissors and um, just trimming it that way to get that um, triangle V um, for a flag effect. And I'm just sponging this piece in crumb cake ink. Um, you'll notice crumb cake is a regular feature of many of my cards. And I'm just using a dauber and just scraping it along the sides. What I've done here is I've attached it to again another piece of vanilla cardstock. And that's because I like a really crisp, just a really fine image just around the outside. Just trimming it off and I'm just going to um, distress it with my fingernails. No fancy tools are required here, um, just my very small fingernails. <clears throat> and I'm just going to bend it back with my fingers, just so that when it goes on the card, it's got a lovely shape. That's the other advantage to having double thickness of cardstock, is it will actually hold it. I'm just going to use some dimensionals. I'm going to cut a strip that will go along. Now it's to position exactly where I want it to go, if I want it higher or a little bit lower. I've stuck it down and then thought, no, maybe a little bit lower, but it will go back to its original place, which is covering up the crumb cake bread. I'm going to take this card from a rectangle to a square size card, just after I um, get the, butterf the wings right. Now this image is a regular image um, I use on many of my cards. It's this splodge from French Foliage. Um, and I was just having a little bit of trouble getting it to the block so I just attached it with a snail but you can see I'm just literally stamping it over pretty much everything in the card in a little bit of crumb cake ink. 
Now I'm just going to be doing a strip that will actually go along the bottom um, of the card so I was just making sure that the piece I'd taken from my um, small pieces of cardstock is actually big enough. And I'm just stamping this image um, from Clockworks multiple times and I'm going to be doing the three colours that I featured. So um, Cherry Cobbler, Bar Jabris, and Summer Star Fruit. So the next image that will come in will be the Bar Jabris. And you can see that the image has got um, a little bit of check, but it's also got some spider in it. So it is actually a really lovely texture. And here's the Bar Jabris. Obviously I was cleaning in between um, changing of colours. That is a very important, um, but I'm sure you're all aware of that by now. <laughs> what I've done is I've just chopped that strip that I had um, previously stamped on into a long strip and then some little rectangles and I'm just, just um, creating like a nice little pattern um, just with the two pieces. What I'll do is once I get it the way that I like it, as you can see I've just trimmed it back so it's a nice flush layer. I'm just crumb caking that, um, the edge um, with the door and the crumb cake ink pad just for a nice distressed effect. On my phone, crumb cake is a great colour to sponge in because it's just not too dark. It'll just give you that, that light distress. And I'm going to do some stamping. So I've got the splodger from French foliage which I'm using again in crumb cake, some more words from Darling Adventure and then I will stamp the um, Roman numerals from Clockworks. One thing I love with Stamp Up is a lot of the stamp sets do work together, um, they've got them in the right proportion, but they do work well so you can always extend um, the options that you have. Here I've got the Clockworks image in again but I've actually taken it off the block just so that I can stamp down little spots of the numbers around the clogs area and around the outside. I like to create lots of layers with my stamping and with my papers and so you can just see a lot of that that's happening today. So I'm sponging that with a little bit of crumb cake ink. I originally would have done that but I wasn't sure exactly the size that um, my card was going to come out as because I just started with a blank canvas. And here I've got the strip that I've just put into um, my embossing folder and that embossing folder is the chevron embossing folder. It's going through the big shot and that's just going to give me a really lovely texture. Who doesn't love a big shot? <laughs> okay now I've just got a little bit of summer star fruit ribbon um, which I'm attaching. I've got the ribbon, a thin strip of very vanilla cardstock and then my stamped out and embossed strip that goes along the bottom of the card. I'll attach that to the actual card which I'm just lining up to make sure it's straight. I'm a my little perfectionist. You can see me positioning and my head popping into screen there so I do apologize for that. Now you can see here I'm just going to tuck the ribbon back just so it doesn't fray that it is neatly tucked behind because there is nothing worse than fraying ribbon on a card. Well that's my opinion anyway. Okay so they're tucked behind and I'll just trim off the excess which you can see I'm doing right here. Okay so now I'm going to attach that to a larger piece of vanilla cardstock I'm going to cut it down to a fine border of um, Whisper White. Okay, so now I'm just wrapping a little bit of string just around and just doing a double bow um, around the card. I just felt like it needed a little bit of something. And ribbon would have just been too chunky because it is a male card after all. There's no tricks to this bow, it's just a normal bow. Um, I just play around with it just to make sure that my tails and my um, loops are actually even before I cut them off. 
Okay. Um, here I'm just putting some pearls on the end of the grating. Now I'm just positioning uh, the card onto a Baja Breeze base and attaching it with some steamer dimensionals. Um, I got a little bit excited up in that top corner and I put a whole little strip down. Not sure what was happening there. I'm just sponging the outside with some um, Versamark ink. Um, normally if I'm colouring a cardstock I'll actually use a Versamark more than a coloured ink pad because that can sometimes be a little bit too strong for my liking. I like the subtleness of the Versamark. So the front of the card is done now. This is the inside and I'm going to start by sponging the inside square with um, Versamark. I do apologise, my voice is a little quirky. I've just gotten off a um, case of tonsillitis um, and I've still got a little bit of um, crackle in my voice. I hope you're enjoying this um, video and there will be actually, just while we're watching this sponge, there will actually be more videos coming um, in the coming weeks and months and a permanent feature on my blog, TanyaWilliams.com. You can see I've just um, inked up the words again from my darling adventure and I'm using Versamark, uh, sorry, um, Baja Breeze, completely different ink pad when I stamped that down. And I've just got Summer Starfruit and I had actually just stamped in some of the clogs and I've now just stamped out the banner um, from Affection Collection in Baja Breeze and I'm going to sponge that with a little bit of crumb cake ink. And this was just an additional feature for the inside. Just behind where I'm going to place it, I'm just going to stamp a splatter of the Cherry Cobbler ink. In um, that stamp set, is, that image is actually from Clockworks. I've just attached down the banner and I'm now stamping in the greeting. Um, the greeting is actually from One in a Million and I've put them together. I'm now just stamping um, some of the splodges in crumb cake ink and I pretty much just sprayed them randomly over the card. You'll see here what I'm actually doing is again creating a strip that will go along the bottom so in a similar nature, nature to the front of the card where I've did, I, um, stamped out spots of image and I've just stamped them so that you've got the splatters of the three colours. Um, I won't actually cut it up like I did for the front but just to carry an element from the front through to the inside of the card is something that I always like to do. And so this is the bar job that I'm just a fun, um, finalising the strip with. You can see here that I've trimmed it down and I've attached it and sponged it with a little bit of crumb cake. I've just got that string that I'm just doing a knot and a bow for the inside. Again carrying the front through to the inside. Um, I did just say this in my blog post, not a huge fan of my handwriting. so. Um, <laughs> you can see I haven't left a whole lot of room to write anything just enough to write the person's name at the top a brief little message at the bottom and sign it off as um, to Neil I'm you know I always like the inside of a card done I think that looks like it's been finished um, and I always think a card without a pretty inside is naked okay I'm just gonna use a little bit of Tombow multi um, to attach the inside in I use Tombow Multi when I'm sticking on the, on, in the inside because it just gives me a little bit of slip when I'm just trying to get it positioned so that I've got a frame even around the four sides. Now just up behind the banner I'm just going to put a little bit of glue. I'm not, I just feel like it needs to be stuck down a little bit so that it's going to be stuck down and with the pop top behind it it's just going to be tapering down. Just some of the little effects that sometimes you go back over once you're finished and you just fix up. So that is a three hour card crammed into 20 minutes. Um, I hope you enjoyed. This will be a new feature on my blog. Um, there's a few things I already know that I want to change but I definitely hope that you're leaving feeling inspired. Um, and tune in again and I'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Bye.